Uh, hi everyone, uh, my name is Mike. I'm a software engineer at SiladB and I'd like to present our work at distributing Eldeds. Uh, so let's start with the problem we are trying to address. Uh, and other that is a function that iterates over the table, uh, collects the data from the rows and returns one result. Uh, there is also an option which allows to group the, the data by some keys and returns one row per uh, and, and returns one row per each key. Uh, the most common example of an aggregate function is count, which simply counts how many rows are there in the table. So uh, why do we even want to distribute aggregate query? Uh, the current implementation of aggregate uh, executes them by firstly downloading the whole data to coordinator node. Uh, this requires that all, uh, all participating nodes have to send the data to the coordinator via the network, uh, which generates lots of data traffic at the same time. Uh, when the coordinator with, uh, when the coordinator will gather all the required rows, uh, he needs to calculate the result of the whole table alone. Uh, this way the query is uh, slow, it generates a lot of unnecessary traffic on the network and inefficiently, uh, and inefficiently make use of the cluster. Uh, here's an example of current aggregation execution. Uh, the client wants to count how many rows contains uh, some particular uh, some particular uh, table. Uh, the request uh, starts when coordinator gets the query. Uh, after parsing it, the coordinator uh, uh, requests all of the required uh, data from the other nodes uh, that holds them. Uh, now each node has to read the data from the disk. It sent it back as a response to the coordinator. Uh, at the end, the coordinator has to iterate over the whole data set uh, uh, and calculate the aggregate. Uh, after all of the steps, uh, he's now able to respond to the client. Uh, now let's see how the same work can be done in a much quicker way by distributing the work. Uh, so the, the distributed query starts the same way. Uh, the coordinator gets the query from the client, uh, then parses it. And if the query can be distributed, uh, the coordinator turns into the super coordinator. Uh, now he will be responsible not for downloading all the uh, all the data from the other nodes, but for uh, but for gathering the partial uh, the partial result and reducing them. Uh, the process uh, starts with splitting the partition arrangements of the of the base query in a way that each participating node gets the subquery to only its local data. Uh, the split also needs to be done with careful to avoid overlapping of the subranges and thus duplication of the data. Uh, when uh, when the participating node gets the subquery from the super coordinator, he acts as a coordinator for the query to his own local data. Uh, when the aggregation is done, uh, the node returns the partial result to the coordinator. Uh, at the end, uh, super coordinator, after uh, receiving all of the partial result, reduces reduces uh, uh, reduces them to the final result, and it can be sent to the client. Uh, summing up the example, uh, the general idea is pretty simple. Uh, firstly, when a coordinator uh, receives um, aggregate query, uh, it becomes a super coordinator, which is in charge of workload distribution. Uh, he starts by splitting the received query into the subqueries for the other nodes. Uh, then each node does the aggregation, 
on its local data and returns the partial result to the super coordinator. Uh, at the end, uh, super coordinator uh, uh, super coordinator merges uh, received result by reducing them and the query is done. Uh, the advantage of this concept is clearly visible. Uh, first of all, the nodes are not sending the whole data set to the coordinator, but only a single result. And also the work is not done by a single node, but spread across all of the nodes instead. And now let's uh, step a little bit into the details of our implementation. Uh, firstly, we uh, we have extrapolated the concept of the distribution to the uh, to the shard level. Uh, so each node uh, propagates the query to all of uh, its uh, own shards. So each shard aggregates only the data he is responsible for. Uh, after the shards return the partial results, uh, the node reduce them and send a single result to a super coordinator. Uh, Stilla also supports uh, several uh, native aggregation functions. Uh, all of them are distributed, so user will observe noticeable improvement without needing to think about distributing them. Uh, the, the distribution of native aggregates is implemented by swapping the underlying function to uh, its, its reducible counterpart. Uh, this way, the internal query re returns the partial uh, result instead of the final one. Uh, before we talk about distribution of the user-defined aggregates, let's do a quick recap of how they look like. Uh, so the UDA is basically a composition of uh, user-defined functions, uh, and the UDA uh, allows the user to extend the use of the Scylla by creating custom aggregates. Uh, UDA definition includes uh, several parameters. Uh, the required ones are state function. Optionally, there are a final function and initial condition. Uh, the state function takes current accumulator and current row, uh, then updates the accumulator based on the value from uh, row. And the state type is pretty specific forward is just a type. Uh, if we add an initial condition to the, init uh, the initial value of an accumulator will be set to it, uh, otherwise it will be null. And finally, the final function maps the final accumulator to some other uh, result which is returned by the aggregate. Uh, to allow the distribution of the UDAs, uh, we have introduced a new optional parameter, a reduce function. When this parameter is defined, uh, the distribution of such aggregate is possible and will be performed. Uh, it's also worth mentioning that it's not possible to define a reduce function for every aggregate, uh, and it's a developer responsibility to define a correct one. And here is an example of the UDA. Uh, let's uh, say we would like to count how many followers have Elon Musk of, uh, on the uh, Twitter. Uh, we can simply model this in the presented uh, table. Uh, the table contains the user ID, uh, his name, and lists of IDs of uh, the user he follows. Uh, and to calculate uh, how many users, uh, uh, and to calculate how many users follows Elon, we have to scan the whole table and check if the Elon's ID is present uh, in each user's list. Uh, so here are the the uh, so here are the functions to define a UDA. 
Uh, the shown UDFs are written in Lua, uh, which is a lightweight language designed for embedded use that still uses. And so let's suppose the Elon Musk's ID is 100. Uh, our state function returns uh, accumulator increased by one. If his ID is present in a list, uh, otherwise it doesn't uh, change the accumulator. Uh, the reduction function is pretty straightforward uh, since our uh, since our accumulators are just counters. It simply adds them together. Uh, <clears throat> uh, as you can see, the state function takes two arguments. Uh, first of them must be a type of a state. Uh, the second one, a type of a column we would like to aggregate. And the uh, and the and uh, the function must also returns an aggregate. A uh, reduction function uh, naturally takes two accumulators and return one reduced. Uh, so this is the definition of the of 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 our uh, of our UDA uh, that counts how many users follows Elon. Uh, it, do uh, it doesn't uh, uh, define the final function because we just want the aggregate, uh, I mean the counter. Uh, however, if you would like to define the UDA, uh, if you would like to define the, the final function, uh, its argument has to be the same type as the state type and the function type will be returned uh, uh, of the of the UDA. Uh, as I said previously, uh, each of the node is responsible for uh, for uh, for the merge of the of the result from the shards, and the super coordinator is responsible for merging the results from the other nodes. Uh, the reduction process is pretty simple. Uh, it's just an execution of a reduction function inside a scylla. Uh, now we are storing the results in memory because we don't support the group, uh, the group clause. Uh, and all of the results are just one row. Uh, in a distributed System, there is always a possibility of some failure. We have implemented a simple retrying policy. Uh, in case any subquery, uh, in case of uh, the of uh, the failure of any subquery, uh, it will be re-executed on the on the super coordinator. Uh, this way, the coordinator may choose an uh, another uh, replica. Instead of the one uh, of the one selected by us, uh, as I said, uh, we have some uh, limitations. Uh, the, only the selections without where and group clauses uh, can be distributed. Uh, this is because we need to serialize uh, already already parsed uh, the selection. Uh, to be able to pass it to an, uh, to another node, and the selection cannot be simply serialized. Uh, thus, we need to represent it on our side and mock the selectors. And now let's talk about the benchmarks and how much distribution improved the execution time. Uh, so our benchmarks was done on free node AWS cluster. Each node had uh, 16 CPUs and each query is an average of 10 queries. Each, uh, I mean, each, each, each result is an average of the 10 queries and queries were executed with an option to bypass cache. Uh, also, the data had 50 million rows. And the table was the table from the example of the Elon Musk and the Twitter. And here are the results. Uh, as you can see, uh, the distribution query is almost 20 times faster. 
uh, all of the native aggregates had very similar uh, results. So I have only selected a few. And here are the UDA uh, result, which is also almost increased 20 times. <coughs> uh, at the end, I would like to show you some graphs. Uh, here are the graphs for the CPU usage. Uh, you can clearly see that the workload is distributed and much uh, in a much shorter period. And the last one is the graphs for transmitted uh, for transmitted packages. Uh, on the left one, you can see that the two nodes are sending a lot of the data. Uh, they are just sending their data to the blue node. Uh, the right graph, on the, on the other hand, shows that all of the nodes are sending much less uh, data in a, in a shorter period of a time. And that's all. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Uh, in case of any questions, feel free to reach out to me.